in today's lecture, we will only discuss uh, what are the different uses of coaching and mentoring in organization. Like, for example, in the previous lecture, I have explained that uh, mentoring and coaching is uh, the term that belongs to the senior management. So how they can use the coaching and management, uh, sorry, coaching and mentoring to uh, groom their employees to make them uh, work uh, working comfortable in the uh, workplace, right? So there are different uses of coaching and mentoring in the organization. The first one is talent pools. So what is meant by the talent pools? Coaching aims to produce optimal performance and improvement at work. It focuses on specific skills and goals and may also have an impact on an individual's personal attributes such as social interaction or confidence. The process typically lasts for a definite period of time or forms on the basis of ongoing management style. So it mainly uh, uh, focuses that uh, by providing the real-time coaching and mentoring to your employees makes their capability to groom with the passage of time. Uh, like they have their talents polished and they have more uh, smooth uh, social interaction and more confidence in working place. Although there is a variety of definitions, there are some generally agreed principles of coaching in organization. It's essentially a non-directive form of development focusing on improving performance and developing an individual, right? So here the, uh, it is non-directive because the coaching and uh, in coaching and mentoring you give a direction to your employees that how you should perform and this is the you give the direction only for only the work that is that needs to be completed you don't give that direction that your skills can be polished in direct in this way so in indirectly the coaching and mentoring also plays an important role in polishing the uh, personal skill in either they these are the internal or external skills they are uh, these skills of the employees are being improved by providing the correct mentoring and coaching along with providing them enough information to solve a specific, specific task. Now, personal factors may be included, but the emphasis is on performance and work, right? So personal factors here, the personal factors may include your um, personality, your uh, perceptions about something, or your beliefs or the values. But it emphasizes on the performance and that, that how you utilize your uh, beliefs, values, perceptions, and thinking uh, in your work performance, right? You either you are working, either you are utilizing in a positive way, or either uh, it leads to uh, to uh, performing in a negative way. The the next one is coaching activities have both organizational and individual goals for individual to assess their strength and developmental areas, right? So coaching uh, works in the two way direction, right? Uh, for the employees, it may help them to groom their uh, personally. Uh, they uh, this help them to to create more opportunities for themselves to um, solve more tasks and uh, for the organization it plays an important role to create a path of success for that specific organization. Like for the uh, if the employees are motivated enough to work in the organization, your organization will definitely lead to the uh, way of success. And the next one is it's a skilled activity which should be delivered by those trained in coaching skills. Right. So uh, coaching is basically a very a skillful activity because only the person who knows everything about doing a, uh, how to do a specific task is only responsible to give right information to their junior ones. Right. So coaching and mentoring should be given to that specific person who is aware of everything, who is aware of the rules and the policies, who is aware of how to manage all the problems uh, like like each each and everything. The person which is well known for that should be given that specific task of coaching to, to their employees. Whereas there, as far as mentoring is related, the mentoring in the workplace describes a relationship in which more experienced colleagues share their greater knowledge to support the development of an inexperienced individual. It calls on the skills of questioning, listening, clarifying, and reframing that are associated with coaching, right? So mentoring, it means that coaching in the coaching you provide the correct principles. You uh, you make your employees learn the correct rules how to do a specific task. But in mentoring, you make them work practically how to do a specific task and how you can help them help them in a practical way. So one key distinction is that mentoring relationships tends to be longer term than coaching arrangements because obviously uh, the uh, in if you are uh, given the opportunity of just coaching, you learn the experience, experience and after a, uh, like a period of the time, you will uh, you will not remember what you have learned in the past. But however, if you done that specific work with your own hands, you know how to do a specific task in the future as well, right? Or if uh, the problem that you have not faced in previous past days, you may recognize in that in coming day, you uh, coming days. 
so you can also be able to uh, solve the specific problems that can be arose from doing that specific task right so it means that the coaching uh, and mentoring goes in hand in hand because a uh, coaching is something you make your employees learn and mentoring is something you make your uh, employees to work practically right so the thing that is practical done is always lasts for a longer period of period of time and the person is confident enough if they face any type of problem he can he or she can so solve it the next one is uh, developing skill and confidence right so uh, here the coaching and the mentor, uh, coaching and mentoring helps to make the talent pools uh, positive for their employees the second one is developing their skills and confidence confidence is a trait that can help us face life experiences head on many of us know that what it feels like to carry out a task with assurance while equally it's a common experience to feel a lack of confidence right so confidence is something that it is basically a trait not only the organization confidence is important it also plays an important role in your personal life so uh, the question arises here it means that how you can develop the confidence or uh, some people say that they are very un under confident and they don't feel like to be confident in, in providing their services in working in a specific area or interacting with people right so understanding the importance of being confident at work can help you feel more inclined to attain a confident mindset right for example if you are going in a meeting you uh, go in a meeting with a mindset that you cannot perform well so you uh, naturally feel the un under confident even prior uh joining the meeting but if you have uh, set your mind that you are you can achieve you can give a good presentation in front of employees you can give a good presentation no matter if your uh, boss is sitting ahead of you so if you make your point set clear that you should be confident then the then the confident naturally arises in you right so you feel that you uh, that you naturally feel that you are confident to to, to face any type of problem so here are some of the benefits of displaying confidence as an employee the first one is enhancing your job performance being confident in your abilities can make you be more productive this can make you more desirable candidate for hiring managers or trend employer right so uh, it makes uh, it creates a job opportunities for you for example if you are confident enough and you have taken part in every aspect of your organization working so you uh, so it may it may increases the chances that you can be selected as a manager in coming days uh, right because confidence is very uh, is considered as a soft skill but it's very important uh, for being a fully fledged person the next one is improving your engagement at work when you have self confidence you may be more at apt to partake in work relation discuss related discussions your increased engagement can help foster or improve relationship in the workplace right so it is the basic thing because uh, not only in the social workplace but also in the uh, so, uh, like personal social relationships as well because if you are confident to meet the new people or to uh, speak something good or bad in the front of those in the face of those people so you may have a uh, chances that you can increase your social engagements and social interactions with the other people right so uh, interacting with other people also build a good relationships in the workplace so having a happier mindset what the confidence also con contributes in uh, maintaining your mindset happier when you are confident at work it can help you feel proud of your accomplishments knowing that your abilities enable you to achieve them right uh the same thing i have explained that if you are going to with a mind, mindset of being confident you can achieve everything that you can face this can translate into joy state of mind increasing the morale for you and everyone on your team right so you have you you have your personal satisfaction that you your abilities match with the uh, job requirements your abilities match with the project requirements and you have done a beyond their expectation and it is very uh, 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 it and it has proved very good for your, uh, for you and for your company right so the mindset is so your mind will be relaxed that you have done uh, you have given your 100% so you have uh, being a confident contributes to your happiest state of mind reducing stress when you are not focused on your inabilities you are more apt to have a creator uh, to have a carefree and positive attitude this can help reduce any work related stress since you have a positive mindset for your various responsibilities right so being confident that you can achieve anything in the workplace you can solve any problem you can uh, manage your task on time you can meet deadline so these all uh, so having on confidence in all these aspects enables you to reduce your stress related to your work environment right 
because you have, if you you are confident and you have set the timetable of all for all of your projects that have uh be being pending so it may reduces a half of your mindset uh, stress that you can achieve them on time and you are confident that he, you can do it faster as possible right so it uh, being confident also contributes to reducing stress of your workplace the next one is helping you solve problems when you are confident about your abilities it can open your mind to new approaches or solutions to workplace situations this is beneficial in various industries and can help you improve leadership skills right so solving problems is same being a confident you have the ability to ask if you are not if you are not able to solve a specific problem you have the confidence to ask to your senior one that how how please guide us to solve this specific problems as i am unable to understand it and solve it right so confidence plays a both role like if you are aware of how to solve a problem or if you are not aware and you have to ask for to solve that problem in both ways you need to be confident right the next one is improving your leadership skills exhibiting confidence and work can help you gain leadership skills such as your ability to make decisions if your manager recognizes your initiative it may make them inclined to give you more responsibilities because they see you have been able to handle your everyday tasks right so this is the natural thing because if you are confident and you need to make part in every decisions so your manager is recognizes you as the one who can solve every problem and and who's and you are you can be the one which can gain a high success rate in the future right so manager always uh, needs those person uh, that have high confidence level and they can take part in the decisions and can express their ideas how they can achieve this uh, specific goals um, and, and all that right so there are two type of skills the first one is internal organization skills internal organization skills are mental it's related to you they help you analyze complex issues so you can come up with solutions they are the skills that help you stay calm even in the face of pressure examples of internal organization skills include creative thinking strategic thinking etc often times this is where your mental fitness come will come out of play your brain has a wide range of skill sets that it will use in different situations it's important to keep your mental fitness skills sharp to be able to learn lean on these skills when you need them right so uh, uh, internal skills means that it's related to yourself for example if, if it's your decision making power if you are it is if it's your problem solving problem if it's your insight if it's your self esteem so these are the skills that are related to you and and is considered as internal organization skills so what is uh, what it it's mean by the external organization skills these organization organization skills have more to do with your work with other people they help to you to keep your workplace clean and free from clutter so that it is easier to complete your task it's when you set timelines for goals how you break goals down into a manageable task how you communicate and how you collaborate with others good external good external organization skills will help you to play as a team member some examples of organization skills include prioritization documentation workflow management and teamwork right so these are the external skills that you exhibit in the workplace either it is related to making any reports of your working or handling day to day tasks or or meeting the deadlines so uh, you are sharp enough to manage everything on time and give uh, the better possible uh, report to your boss right so these are uh, like two main skills the internal organization skills and external organization skills which can be improved by having a confidence in your abilities and having a confidence in in what you have learned in your workplace the next one is managing poor performance starting a performance management starting a poor performance management process can be uh, immediate intimidating it's never fun to criticize someone or worse fire them if they can't make the improvements you need we are okay so here are the step by step guide for example how you can manage your poor, poor performance here the poor performance means that the one employee who is not getting uh, on time in the office they are not following the uh, the company's policies they spend more time uh, like sitting Uh, in the organization, and they won't take part in the discussion. They are not willing to do uh, the work beyond their abilities. They are um, managing their day-to-day tasks hardly. They are not submitting their reports. They, like everything that 
shows the negative impact of yourself uh, comes in the term of poor performance right so how you can manage those poor poor performance as an uh, manager or as a coach provide a coaching provider how should you uh, make your employee to be more engaged in the organization so the first one is prepare for an emotional response right emotional response is that like if you are not working uh, the way we are expecting you to work uh, we we the only option we have left is to fire you right so prepare for an emotional response like uh giving them um like a warning if i say um to your employees if they are not following the rules of your companies or address the problem face to face right or if you can ask your employee that what is the basic problem that makes them to do so in this environment and which is the problem that is responsible for this non serious behavior of you and uh, involve human resources early on like human resources may include that the right coaching and mentoring or uh, the uh, relationship that you give to your employees uh, the leniency that you give your employees that they can rest for some up for some time and all the human resources that is the basic need of your of a human being make a plan for success make a plan that you can you should uh, be punctual you should be working on the task you should be giving the reports and 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 give them Uh, the breakdown of their goals so they can achieve their manageable task and after that their performance can be bettered follow up and make tough decision when you need to right so follow up on them on your employees that if they are following that plan that is made by you or if they are still non serious you can you can take the decision that can be harsh for you and your company but it but it's very important at some point right i think so so managing an employee for performance a real world example here i have a given a, a like a, an example a written an example so th- so that you can be more clear how you can manage a poor, poor performance and what it does it means by a poor, poor performance right so imani was promoted to a manager role earlier this year right her team of five has been doing really well with one exception juliet juliet work isn't meeting imani's expectations her work is rushed submissions are full of errors and it's often submitted late imani has tried to give juliet feedback but while juliet fixes the performance issues imani call, falls out she doesn't seem to be incorporating the feedback into the following assignments right so here uh, the imani gave the uh, gave the constructive feedback to the juliet but still he she is not following up on the words of his boss which often have similar problems Juliet's work isn't improving despite Imani's consistent feedback. Imani has started thinking about letting her go, but she worries that she hasn't done enough to help Juliet improve. She wants to be fair to Juliet but also wants to be fair to the rest of the her team and succeed as a new manager. Imani needs to learn how to manage Juliet through her performance, right? So here is the perfect example that if you are manager, you need to balance between your employees, right? you this is uh, sometimes this is not the only solution to fire them but you have at least before firing them give you 100% that you have done everything to uh, make it, make them better uh, or you have done everything to provide the better feedback to your employees or, you ha- or if you have helped them in uh, solving their problems like as a manager you have to give uh, 100% before firing your employees right because this is your role as well you need to be successful in your roles and you need to be just just with your other employees so make them uh, make an effort to uh, fix the poor performance of the employee if not that you you can take the decision which is according to the policies of your company re engaging in the workforce understanding employee engagement employee engagement can be critical to a company's success given its clear links to job satisfaction and employee morale to make communication is a critical part of creating and maintaining employee engagement engaged employees are more likely to be productive and high high performing they also have display of a display a greater commitment to the company's values and goals right so employers can can encourage employee engagement in many ways including communicating clear expectations clearly offering rewards and promotion for the excellent work keeping employees informed about the company's performance and providing regular feedback other strategies include making efforts to make employees feel valued and respected and fe- and, and feeling that their ideas are being heard and understood engaged employees believe that their work is in- meaningful believe that they have appreciated and backed by their supervisors and they have been trusted with the success of their company right 
so uh, the coaching and mentoring is also a second form of engaging of your uh, uh, engaging your employees to your to their workplace either there are different strategies to engage your employees like the, that you can offer incentives that you can give uh, some leisure time or the if you can give the positive feedback to them if you can give them opportunity to take part in the discussions or take part in the decision making like there are different strategies that you can use to engage your employees but coaching and mentoring something else that you that you clearly defines that if you engage in a work workplace it will be beneficial for you right so coaching is something else that makes your employee automatically engage in the workforce so however the question arises here that what do employees need to feel engaged a few factors to consider in this area are the company and its leadership you can't expect your staff to be become engaged if there is no clear and decisive message from them to embrace before you can start to measure their level of engagement ask yourself following are your company's goals and visions clear and concise do the employees understand these goals is there a clear link between the employees work and the company's goals can employees see how their work ultimately contributes to the success of the business is the leadership of the organization present are able to motivate the workforce are the managers equipped with the skills needed to lead a team success right so before engaging your employees the manager needs to ponder over some important points if you as a ceo or the manager of the company have the clear visions of what your company offers to their employees if there is a link between the senior management and the junior management of the company if the senior management is really honest and just with your junior ones and they are and they are given their timely salaries salaries or timely incentives to them or if your employees uh, feel comfortable by discussing the various problems with you so before going to engage your employees engage yourself as a person as in engage yourself as something as someone who is responsible for making uh, their team work and providing and guiding them the right path right so here it explains that uh the manager and the ceo also should be engaged in the company's policies rather than before making their employees to expect everything from them right so when all these components are in place you can begin to look closer at how well engaged your employees are taking a close look at the business and its leadership first can also help you further develop in employee engagement strategies and practices right so as if the 100% is the manager and the ceo is involved or engaged in the workplace the uh, employees also follow their path and they also uh, feel responsible that they should take part in the uh, workforce activities and they should they, they give their 100% no matter if their skills are underrated or not they can improve their skills in the uh, in the future if they have given the right coaching and mentoring so basically the uh, coaching and mentoring have these essential like they it plays an important role in in uh, furnishing your talent pools it makes your Um, uh, employ improve their skills and make their uh, confidence high it makes their uh, performance poor performance to be uh, best uh, or if they are engaged in the workplace or not right so if you have any questions for today okay so abira that's for that's all for today um, take care and you may leave now